no matter how you feel today about this topic, not just of inclusion, but about the inclusion of people with conviction histories, my goal is to crack open your mind and your heart a little bit more to the possibilities of creating opportunities for people with conviction histories. Because it is so painfully difficult to succeed after incarceration and because I truly believe, and Defy Ventures truly believes, that people with conviction histories are our country's most overlooked and undervalued talent pool. So I'm Veronica, I lead uh, the work in the Bay Area for a national nonprofit organization called Defy Ventures. It might not be immediately obvious what's happening in this picture, but these are the days that I live for when a caring group of people from the free world come into a correctional facility to support Defy's talented entrepreneurs in training to compete in a Shark Tank style business pitch competition and graduate in cap and gown in front of their families, many times wearing a cap and gown for the first time in their lives. This is why we exist at Defy, to help people with conviction histories succeed, to defy the poor odds of success for people with conviction histories in this country. I think it's important to spend a little bit of time reflecting on what's at stake here for this country, for this workforce, and for this economy. So I'm gonna frame the problem um, by providing some context for Defy's work with some data. Many of you might already know that the US is the most incarcerated country on the planet. We have about 5% of the world's population and nearly 25% of its prisoners. 100 million Americans, one in three Americans, has a conviction history. It's the same number of people that have a college degree in this country. So what does that say about how opportunity is distributed? What does that say about your talent pool? What does that say about how you create diverse and inclusive communities within your companies? There are 2.2 million people incarcerated in county jails, state prisons, federal prisons, and detention centers at this very moment in time. And we know that mass criminalization and incarceration disproportionately impact communities of color and low-income communities. At the rate we are going, one in three African-American babies and one in six Latino babies born today will spend time in prison at some point in their life. 650,000 people are returning to our communities each year only to face the reality of being known for the worst thing they've ever done when apl applying for a job, when applying for housing, being forced to disclose this worst past mistake, in some states being denied the right to vote. After paying their debt to, so to society, facing judgment over and over again, imagine if all of us had to wear our worst past mistakes and bad decisions like a scarlet letter emblazoned across our chests. Imagine how debilitating that would be. And this is why at Defy Ventures, we like to ask the question, what if you were only known for the worst thing you've ever done? Just sit with that for a minute. Think about that worst thing. What kind of label would you have attached to you? X. Fill in the blank. So 600, 650,000 people are returning to our communities each year and lacking support, lacking opportunity, facing this harsh reality of being known only for the worst thing they've ever done. It's no surprise that within three years, two thirds of people are rearrested. Within five years, more than 75% of people are rearrested, and half of these rearrests happen in the first year. 89% of people report that they're unemployed at the time of their arrest. But no statistic is more devastating than this. Studies have shown that up to 70% 
of children whose parents go to prison will also spend time in prison. This is why Defy exists and why Defy intervenes where we intervene, to empower people to create new legacies for themselves and for their families. So the title of the session is A Second Chance, but for all of these reasons, maybe it should be A Fair Chance. So what are we doing about it at Defy? What are we doing to level the playing field and to give people a fair chance at success? I know it's incredibly corny to put Richard Branson on a slide, but he said nice things about Defy unsolicited. And he gets the big idea. He's also done amazing things for people with conviction histories in the UK. But he gets the big idea behind Defy, which is that given a different set of life circumstances and opportunities, people with conviction histories could be amazingly talented business leaders and entrepreneurs and certainly employees. So how do we defy the odds? We are providing men, women, and youth with conviction histories, with the tools, skills, and opportunities to have not just a second chance, but in many cases, a legitimate first chance to succeed. We provide training on entrepreneurship, employment, and personal development. We live in a world where it is so hard to succeed after incarceration. So we are training our country's most overlooked and undervalued talent pool to prepare them for the workforce. We change the hearts and minds of employers as part of this. And because we have so much work to do to create hiring fairness for people with conviction histories, and because many of the people we work with are incredibly talented, natural, and proven entrepreneurs, we turn people into their own employers by making them successful small business owners. Our program starts on the inside to prepare people for success on the outside. We also work with them after release to secure employment, and if their dream is to become a small business entrepreneur, we have an incubator that walks them through every step of the process of planning for and launching and scaling a business. We also provide seed funding. We implement our program using a blended learning model that combines 100 hour-long video-based courses with in-person group learning and coaching and competition in our Inside Prison program. And then in our post-release program, we have another 200 hours of coursework on an online learning platform and more in-person coaching and mentorship and business incubation. Here you have a sampling of some of our faculty. We have everyone from Harvard and Stanford Business School professors, positive formerly incarcerated role models. Seth Godin teaches our marketing course, major venture capitalists, top business leaders. We have courses on everything from entrepreneurship 101 to how to write a resume and give a winning job interview to personal finance and business accounting to how to give a meaningful apology parenting from behind bars business etiquette these are some of our amazing corporate partners where we source many of our volunteers to provide employment and business coaching and mentorship this is part of how we change hearts and minds by bringing people in to build empathy, to see the amazing potential and value that people with conviction histories can add to a company. And with time, many of these companies are becoming employment partners. So you might be thinking, this sounds okay, but really, what's the impact? At Defy, we have the kinds of outcomes that make me believe that we will put ourselves out of business in my lifetime by dramatically reducing incarceration and restoring livelihoods. So here are our inputs. We've served 2,800 people in the prison program, 800 post-release, 700 family members have participated in our family program. We've plugged in 4,500 volunteers for 25,000 hours, and we've invested $700,000 in small business creation across our 1,000 released graduates. We have a 95% employment rate. We've helped launch 170 small businesses that have created 370 jobs, many of which have gone to people with conviction histories. And you can see some examples of our entrepreneur and training businesses, everything from self-defense to cleaning to catering and dog walking, tailoring, food trucks, you name it. Most importantly, we have a less than 
50% recidivism rate. So you can compare that to the statistics I shared earlier, 50% after one year, 65% after three years, 75% after five years. Yeah. Oh, thanks. Okay, so I hope that means that I've convinced you that Defy works and that creating opportunities for people with conviction histories at your company is a nice thing to do. Maybe it's even the right thing to do. I realize that what I'm trying to convince you of might feel too high risk or undoable. Or maybe you're personally bought in, but your leadership or your current employees or your legal team is not there. Smart Recruiter says you are who you hire. And as we all know, people with conviction histories can conjure many negative associations and feelings in society. So what if, what if I told you that fair chance hiring was not just a nice thing to do, a good thing to do, the right thing to do, but also good for business? And that if you choose to do this, you won't compromise on the quality of candidates and in fact, fair chance employees can be superior to their counterparts because that's what the data supports. And I think it's important to both look at the data and also to humanize the issue. So some data first. There are many case studies and reports that support that fair chance employees have the same or better performance, productivity, and retention rates than their peers. Fair chance employees can also add special value by having deep loyalty to a company. And they also bring diverse experiences and perspectives and backgrounds. Many of you might also be having challenges sourcing high quality entry level talent. This is a potential solution to that as well. So now for the human piece. Many of you might have been at the session on the main stage yesterday afternoon and saw Shelly Winner speak. So you heard a little bit about her journey from child of an addict to addict to convicted felon to mother to incarcerated person to free person to standout job applicant to rejected candidate to defender of her rights, to superstar employee at one of the largest tech companies in the world, promoted within six months. So I'm going to have Shelly come up, and we're going to do a little chat, a little faux fireside chat up here. But I want to welcome Shelly up in a special, hold on, a special defy way that I'm going to teach you. It's going to make her feel like a million bucks, because she's worth more than that. Um, and maybe we can get a little tech support up here because I have two more slides to show after this. <laughs> or I can wing it. Okay, so we're going to do something called a level 10 clap. I'm going to explain it, but it starts with a level 1 clap, which is like your lamest, most polite golf clap. So kind of get that rolling while I give you the rest of the instructions. So that's level 1. Keep it going, keep it going, keep it going. Okay, I'm going to start counting up to 10 on my fingers. Every time I count higher, you're going to double the intensity of your clap. Okay, so you're at level 1. At level 10, you're going to be on your feet hooping and hollering, OK? <laughs> level 2, a little, little more. 3, 4, 5. Good, good. Yes, yes. More, more. Woo! Yeah! <clears throat> Thanks, guys. That was really good. If you come. Participate in a Defy event, you will get to do lots of level 10 claps. Yes. Okay. Shelly, I'm going to ask you a few questions. Okay. Is that okay? Yeah. All right. Um, so just to be clear, Shelly is a graduate of Defy Ventures prison program. Woo! Yes. <laughs> Shelly, what was the single biggest challenge you faced after your release? I think one of the biggest single challenges that I faced uh, was not letting that my stigma hold me back from my success. Um, to keep pushing forward and even though society wants to 
think I'm a certain way, you know, not letting those thoughts limit me and not believing those stigmas, you know, saying, no, I am worth it. I am good enough to work at this company and I do have something to contribute and I do have talent and skill that, you know, I can bring. So that's a good tee up to my next question, which is, so is, how, how many of you saw Shelly speak yesterday and heard about her candidate experience? Okay, Woo, so many good. of you, that's wonderful. <laughs> so how did you make the case for yourself when you were fighting your current employer's decision to reject you based solely on your conviction history? What I did was uh, I wrote a letter and I just explained to them that yes, I made some bad decisions in my life, but that is not who I am. And that is not the whole picture of Shelly Winner. And I, you know, sent them reference letters and certificates that I had done of classes I completed and programs I completed to better myself as a person. I, you know, explained to them that I had changed my life and become rehabilitated. Awesome. Okay, so now, how does it feel to know that your success has been part of making a major change in the hiring practices of one of the biggest tech companies in the world? Wow, you know, it's one of the most incredible feelings. Um, it's, it's indescribable. I know that the tech world is one of the hardest to get into, even if you don't have a criminal history. And to be probably one of the first people to, you know, break in and get a company to see, oh my gosh, you know, maybe we're, we're not having this growth mindset that we always brag about and let's, let's, let's change some things here and let's see how it goes. And it's funny because uh, when I first started, um, there were people in headquarters that were checking up on me periodically just to see how my performance was. And every time they got feedback from my other managers, it was always, you know, really good. Like, oh, she's killing it. She's doing great. And um, so I think after hearing that, every time they checked in, they were like, you know what, I think we made the right decision. So it just feels really good to also pave the way for other people um, that, you know, not, that won't have the opportunity um, otherwise to get into the tech world. So what's next for Shelly and for this movement? <sighs> to continue to share my story, uh, to continue to fight stigmatizations and to open people's minds um, and to work on myself, to continue becoming a better person, a better mother, and um, yeah, shoot for the stars. <laughs> okay. We're, I'm, I have a couple more slides, like I said, but we're, Shelly's going to stay up here for, I think we're going to have some time for, we may or may not, oh, no, we don't have time for Q&A. One, oh, okay, no, just kidding. <laughs> yeah. All right, let me, let me try to close you guys real quick. Okay. Let's do, let's do something with what you've learned today. Um, what I really want you to do is include people with conviction histories in your talent strategies. If that's, if, that's too much, if that's too big of a step to take right now, you can get started by doing a few different things. Learning more about this issue and about fair chance hiring by reading Defy's founder's book. I promise I'm not just trying to push books here. The sale, 100% of the sales of this book go to Defy. So um, it's available on Amazon. It's a must read, if I do say so myself. Um, please share with your friends when you finish reading it. Uh, I put recruit on here. I, I don't mean recruit. I, I do want you to recruit people with conviction histories, but I want you to help defy recruit. Our team is growing. Um, if you come across awesome candidates that are maybe wanting to shift into the nonprofit sector, please get in touch with us. Um, we're always looking for great new talent. Uh, volunteering. So uh, this is a great first step in increasing exposure. In, getting proximate to a big social problem and building empathy for you and the stakeholders at your company. Um, we have lots of ways to do that, lots of events coming up. We have a post-release uh, pitch practice night on May 15th that we're recruiting for. We have two in-prison events, May 22nd and May 24th at Pleasant Valley State Prison. 
This is my email address, veronica at defyventures.org, not .com, veronica at defyventures.org. Please shoot me a note. would love to get you involved with Defy. And um, just in closing, I hope I accomplished what I set out to accomplish and that your hearts and minds are cracked open a little bit wider. Um, if you're a company that values people as whole, complex beings with diverse experiences and backgrounds, you know that people are so much more than their past mistakes and bad decisions. And I hope that I've convinced you that you, you don't have to compromise on candidate quality when it comes to fair chance candidates and that your company's workforce will not be truly diverse until you intentionally include the 100 million Americans that have conviction histories in your talent strategy and that Defy Ventures can be your partner in training and sourcing amazing candidates. Thank you so much and thank you Shelly. Yes. <laughs>